It's a library. You're supposed to be quiet. Oh, wait. It's 2016. We want to talk in the library. We want parents to talk to their children and children to talk with their parents. We want people to talk with each other. And that's what our program is all about this morning. Hi, I'm Jerry Hyde, Youth Services Manager at the Ames Public Library. Welcome to Well Read, a program about a little bit of this and a little bit of that at your Ames Public Library. Today's little bit about that is small talk a project that we're having here at the library beginning very, very soon. With me, I have wonderful guests this morning, <laughs> our partners in this project. And I'll start with Lynn. Um, she's a familiar face in our project, as I hope you all know, <laughs> our library director. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Lynn, and tell us a little bit about yourself and why this project is important to you. Thanks, Jerry. It's such a pleasure to be here again. I am Lynn Carey. I'm the library director. I've been here for many, many years. And through the years, it's just been delightful to see all of the children that get their start in lifelong literacy right here at Ames Public Library. And so when this project came along as a possibility, I was over the moon. It's the kind of thing that libraries should be involved in. It's the kind of partnership that we always seek with other strong partners in the community. And then the topic matter of kids talking to parents and parents talking to kids is just exactly what we want to promote at the library. So I'm very pleased to be here today. Well, and another natural partner that we have in this project of Small Talk is Raising Readers in Story County. And with us, we have Kim. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Kim? Thanks for having me back. I'm uh, with Raising Readers in Story County, and we are participating with this program as well. Um, this is, a, again, a natural partnership between us and the library and Iowa State, which you'll hear about in just a few minutes, uh, as we continue to work countywide in early language and literacy for children zero to eight, this project specifically focuses on our younger audience and the importance of communication to help with their literacy skills as they get ready to enter school. And then we're going to go right to the middle, the, the heart <laughs> of our project. And Dr. Connie Beecher um, will let you tell us a little bit about you. You're our new face on the yeah. panel. So, so thank welcome. you for having me. I am new, um, new to Iowa. So I'm just starting year two at um, Iowa State University. And um, my area is early intervention, uh, specifically literacy and language development. And so I'm an assistant professor in the School of Education. I also have an extension appointment because Iowa State is a land grant university, as you know. And so what that means is I'm responsible for programming about literacy for the state of Iowa. So um, my work takes place in the community, so it's a natural fit for, for me to be partners with Ames Public Library and with Raising Readers. So, um, and you make that sound like it's like very little, <laughs> it's just like common knowledge, but we, we all know, everyone on this um, show knows how important that part is. And, and when you say out in the state of Iowa, um, using Ames Public Library and Raising Readers and Ames in, you know, is a very important um, basis. And we're very honored to have you, you partner with us. I was going to say use us. You're not using us. No. We're, we're partnering together. Yeah, this is definitely a team effort. <laughs> yes, for definitely. Sure. So, um, so you came to us and Raising Readers and kind of asked us some, some things or, you know, to start this project. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little, tell us a little bit about what that project was that you had in sure. mind when you, so, you asked. So, um, you know, basically my background is uh, I was a special education teacher and I mostly worked with young children and their families, you know, uh, kindergarten through third. Um, and what I found in my experience was, it was really too, that was really kind of late to be starting, uh, working with language and literacy development especially. And so because of that, my focus has shifted um, earlier and earlier. And then uh, after I finished my PhD, I knew I wanted to do research uh, and so I did a postdoc at Juniper Gardens Children's Project, which is um, at the University of Kansas. And that's a place where the original um, Hart and Reasley study was done. And that's a study where um, researchers took extensive uh, recordings in people's homes 
around the amount of words that parents spoke to children. And what they found was that in households where there was not a lot of talk to children, children had lower vocabularies, um, children, by the time that they were three, they heard millions of less wor millions fewer words than, than other children's where parents talked more. And um, they found that that created a meaningful difference uh, when children entered kindergarten in their skills in uh, vocabulary and comprehension and their readiness to read. And so um, that started me on my trajectory of um, I want to work um, in a community that is uh, passionate about early literacy and early intervention. And Iowa is one of those states that is usually on the forefront of that type of thing. Um, the other unique thing about Iowa is um, at Iowa State, we really are charged with bringing the research of the university to the community. And so um, it just made sense for me to work with people in the community by myself. I can't uh, get the message out about talking and reading to your kids, just one person. It makes sense for people to learn about that at the library. And it makes sense for people to um, who are participating in programs with Raising Readers to um, do that. And so when I came, I initially met with um, Carolyn Johns at Raising Readers, and uh, we realized pretty quickly that our interests line up. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I think yes. Yes. Definitely. And then um, because of my contacts in my postdoc, uh, I had been talking to my mentors at Juniper Gardens about the fact that I have these community partners and that we, you know, we are interested in doing a project um, really promoting parent talk and reading with young children. And they said, you know, um, you might look into the Lena Start. Uh, they're now starting to test that. So I should say a little bit about Lena and yes. what that what, is. What is Lena? Yeah. So Lena is a foundation. It's a nonprofit research company that was started by um, some individuals who had been in educational software. And like me, they realized that by the time children were in school, it was kind of hard to then um, make up for what they had missed early. And so they created um, this software and... Um, um, how do I describe it? I, I meant to bring it, and then I didn't, of course. A device. A device. A device. Uh, it's, it's a, a digital, little square box. <laughs> it's, a, it's a digital language processor, and you can think of it as um, like a Fitbit, you know, uh, a pedometer but about talk. Mm -hmm. You know, so what happens is um, the, the uh, baby or the toddler wears this little um, digital language processor, and it's some specially designed clothing and it records all the language directed towards the child. And then uh, that tells us how many words were spoken to the child, how many adult child exchanges happened, and then it gives you a measure of how much electronic noise is in the environment, which we typically interpret as TV time being on. Mm -hmm. And then we use that information to work with families on increasing the amount of talk um, it just gives you a very concrete way, just like when you wear a pedometer, the, the idea is to increase your steps. The, the Lena device um, gives us feedback about amount of words, and we use that to help people increase their words. So their new product, the Lena Start, basically they mm, have now put a education program around that. So uh, in the same way as just getting a pedometer doesn't mean that you know how to exercise or know what to do. Mm -hmm. You actually have to maybe take a class or you have to figure out what that's going to be. We need to help parents with, it's not enough for us to say you need to talk more. Um, it's really hard for adults because uh, research has found we actually overestimate how much we talk. Uh, from our perspective, we're talking all day long, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily talk that's directed towards children specifically. And so um, we, so now Lena has developed a whole package that, that around the, the digital language processor where um, there's a class that parents take, the um, recording process has been made easier, and um, they get printed, nice printed reports and feedback. <clears throat> and um, so I talked to the people at Lena and I explained, I'm in this community, 
I have partners at the public library and with Raising Readers, a community organization, and we're interested in piloting this, and they were very excited. So let, let's take one step back to the Lena device, because you talked about the number of words is important, mm -hmm. but there's also that exchange. Right. And that, I'm, so many times we say talk to your children when in fact we really, what's really important is to talk with. And yes. that word to and with, you know, exchanging that is a very important part, at least in my mind it is. So when we talk to children, there are directives like, you know, stop doing that. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, it's not something that the child is actually thinking about and processing and giving me something in return. And lots of times, and I'm very guilty of this, is that I just keep talking and I don't allow that time for that response. So tell us a little bit about how important that right. response right. is. And anybody can. I mean. So the, um, the, the exchange is really, um, actually when you look at the research on um, talk to children, uh, we find that number of exchanges is more predictive of children's later uh, language development and vocabulary. And uh, the reason is, is because the, the child's brain is designed to learn language through exchange. Um, so for example, you cannot put a baby in front of a TV where there is a person talking and they won't learn language that way. Um, the brain uh, is designed to learn language through social interaction. And so it's the back and forth between the adult and the child that really um, helps strengthen and develop that child's language. And so sometimes um, it's hard to think of, think of talking to a baby, right? And then how do you talk with a baby to get a response? And so what you have to wait for is their response sometimes is a facial expression or their response is a noise. Like and it, bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> um, their eyes widen, yeah. you know, and they smile. Uh, so that's the back and forth. And what that really does is it cues the child to pay attention to the adult's face. And then they really tune into the sounds of the language. Um, and as children get older and then start to answer, you know, the important thing is, is to follow their interest and really um, ask them questions where they can then start to um, add more to the conversation and then um, work on their figuring out the meanings of words and concepts, you know. And that all takes time because it really they, does. they are making those pathways happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I was told a long, you know, probably eight, ten years ago about um, when every child ready to read from the Public Library Association, you know, talked uh, that conversation was important in talking with your child, the early literacy practices, that, that you should count to five or six seconds, you know, mm -hmm. count to five or six when you interact with a child and wait for that to happen. And I, and five Five to six seconds is a long, <laughs> long time, especially when my brain is so going boop, 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 boop. Right. And, um, but I have found, and especially with babies, and I challenge our public to do this, um, that if you talk with a child or with a baby and then count to yourself, and not out loud because you want the child to process, um, count to six, mm -hmm. that there will be blowing bubbles or a big eye or a smile or mm -hmm. you know some sort of reaction that you would have missed had you not been patient and wait. And in our hustle and bustle of today's world, that is so difficult to do, yes. but so worthwhile and right. um, very, very important. So, um, so this Lena device will help record those interactions and mm -hmm. help us um, or help the parent um, find out what, what they're doing and then what happens in this project. Right. So. Uh, what happens is parents do uh, weekly recordings, and I should say um, the recordings get deleted. Um, one of the great things about, one of the innovative things about this software is nobody needs to listen to the recordings. Um, the program actually is using a really sophisticated algorithm to, uh, to figure out words, and it uses the direction, um, it uses the space between the speaker and the microphone and um, pauses and frequencies to figure out what's adult word and what's child vocalizations. And then 
um, the computer comes up with the number of words, the number of exchanges, and the, the um, electronic noise, and then those recordings get deleted. And so sometimes people wonder about that or, yeah. you know. Right. So if I'm having a bad day, we're not going to know <laughs> We're not it. listening to the <laughs> words you're right. saying. Exactly. About right. That. You so. know, everybody <laughs> says stuff that they think, oh, I'm so glad nobody heard that. Yes. <laughs> We've all had bad days like that. Yes. I mean, and if any parent tells another parent that they've never had a bad day, then they're not telling the truth. <laughs> That's I exactly think. right. Um, well, and we also want the, the parents to feel comfortable being silly and right. um, yes. exactly. talking yeah. With the baby, not with the researcher on the other right, end. Right, right. Yes. That's true, too. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yes. so, so there's that device, and then there's the activities or the classes that we're going to offer right. along with that device. Exactly. And, so, and tell us a little, uh, just a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, so those are, um, it's basically an eight-week class. We have a, a one week that's going to be an orientation session. Um, parents will come to the library. Um, they will... Uh, sort of check in. We'll have childcare available for any of their children that they need to bring. They will uh, come in and bring in their recordings. We plug that in. And then the class is uh, it's a video based class where they watch a video. The videos are really well done. Um, they, they use a lot of babies and toddlers to get the messages across. And so, for example, they, they will talk about how do you read with a baby and give examples and show, demonstrate how to do that. A lot of people think that, you know, you got to wait until children are older before you start reading, until you have somebody who can sit on your lap, for example, and then actively look at the book. But you can actually go ahead and read to your, even your newborn. And so they'll demonstrate, you know, they show on the video a person doing that. And then there's some group discussion um, where people talk about uh, their experiences with that or what they plan to do. After we've had the recordings, they also get a printed report with a graph to show, you know, their progress. Um, you started out with 8,000 words, you know, and then week two, you've got 10,000, and then we set goals. You know, we, there's individual goals, and then there's group goals. Oh, cool. You know. So there, there's a lot going on. It, it's not just the device on the child. Right. Um, there's the educational piece and then the support. The support from the group. From the group, too. Right. As well as the presenter that's helping guide this, or facilitator that's helping guide this all along. Right. So, okay, let's use a little bit of imagination. I'm a young mom. I have, <laughs> it was a long time ago, um, <laughs> and I have a baby um, or a child. Um, how, what's the age range for this class? For small talk, we, uh, for small talk, we are um, taking zero to thirty months. Okay, and, zero to thirty. And months. how do I get signed up? So you can call the library and sign up. You can contact Raising Readers. You can call or email me at um, Iowa State. We're going to have sign up sheets sort of around town um, at McFarland Clinic. We'll have a sign up sheet at places where young parents are. You know, we'll we'll have some sign up sheets. Uh, we'll have a classes. We anticipate starting in March. Um, we're doing some training um, over the next few months and and uh, setting up. Um, I do have to say, this is a this is a completely new thing. So it's not like. Um, Hey, we've got it all perfected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to do 100% perfect. I mean, just like every parent is 100% right. perfect. Right. From the beginning. Right. So um, the great thing is, is you know, parents will have the opportunity to help us learn how to better deliver this kind of information. Uh, you know, so we know what it. You know, we know what it. What the um, what the practices are that parents need to do. The thing that the thing that we're still working on is um, how do you one find the parents who need to hear that message, you know, because they're typically parents who have a lot going on in their life, who have mm -hmm. a lot of stress. They're the ones that really need to learn how to have positive interactions with their children. Um, you know, so we need to figure out how do we, how do we get to the, to the parents. We need to find out how do we deliver a program like this in the community in such a way that it's going to actually change adult behavior. You know, so typically this is something that would have been done in a home visiting program. Mm -hmm. Maybe people would have had like a parents as teachers or um, in, you know, involved in Head Start, you know, come to their house and teach them how to do this. So we're trying it out in the community, in a community setting. And that really hasn't been done very much. So 
it's very much a, um, a beautiful thing where everyone is helping us learn how to do this. It's not, it's not as if um, I have this magic formula that I'm going to teach everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's a, a process. It right? is. That's it's happening. a process. And, and we're all it, learning from each other. Right. And mm -hmm. what works for one person that, you know, it's just a basic knowledge that, you know, transfers from person to person that some of it works for us and some of it works for this right. group and some of it. So um, it's a, a wonderful project call and wonderful partners. Um, the project's called Small Talk. Um, if you're interested or you know of someone that might be able to be a part of this project, the zero to 30 months, um, have them call us at the library or Raising Readers in Story County or look for those posters out in the community mm -hmm. that you can mm -hmm. call that contact number as well. Um, it's coming up sometime starting in March and it. It, I'm very excited <laughs> about it. I read research all the time about what's important mm -hmm. and, and um, kind of share that with, with our families here in, our, in the library. Um, but this time we get to be part of that research, which is very outstanding and very, very exciting for me. I hope it will be for you too. So please, um, if you have someone, again, in mind or you would like to participate, give us a call and um, we'll get you signed up and or you know, tell you a little bit more about the program. And so there's no more shushing in the library. <laughs> it's all about talking. And we know that talky parents are making talk, talky children with higher vocabulary. So it's very important. <laughs> talk with your child, let the, your child talk with you and talk with others. So um, until next time, uh, we'll talk with each other. Thank you.